I'm here with Time Team on Salisbury Plain, which apart from being the Army's largest training ground, is one of Europe's best preserved and most extensive areas of undisturbed archaeology. It's vast, over 38,000 hectares of empty landscape. That's the size of the Isle of Wight, all given over to military manoeuvres and amazing archaeology. What we've heard is that buried around here there could be Iron Age houses and possibly a Roman villa. But there are real problems when you've got an army rumbling over archaeological remains and right at the centre of this conflict is Beach's barn. This ploughed field may not look much but geophys tell us it's stuffed full of archaeology. By working with the army, we're hoping to protect this site so they'll have to dig their holes somewhere else. We've got just three days to make our case for saving Beach's barn. Getting in here, Ian? Well, there's Roman pottery everywhere in the topsoil here. Yeah? yeah, I thought I saw some bits. Yes, yeah, nice rim shirt there. Yeah. yeah body shirt there. You're an archaeologist working for the Ministry of Defence, yeah? That's right, yes. Um, I look after the Salisbury Plain training area for the army, all 94,000 acres of it. <laughs> so, what kind of problems can arise? Well, ironically, I mean, the army have been here for about 102 years now, and we have two and a half thousand monuments. And the army have, have, have saved the area from being ploughed and built on. Yeah. But as the, as the sort of army activities got more and more intense and the vehicles have got larger, then it's possible that the, the, the tanks can do damage. And of course, every time a soldier stops, he wants to dig a hole. <laughs> so they might dig sort of scoops or trenches in this lot and go straight through the archaeology? They might. I mean, we know there's something here from the past. So what I do is when the, the exercise planners come in, I mark up a very large area saying, you know, do not dig on this. But what we want to do is, is, is define the area exactly yeah. and give it the protection of being scheduled, which gives us a, a bit more of a influence over it. So how are we going to do that, Mick? Well, I think we're going to have to start with some geophysics because it's, uh, it's an ideal site for that, isn't it? Perfect for it, yeah. Let's go and check it out and then we can start uh, digging a few holes, I think. Yeah. So the pottery in the topsoil suggests there were Romans here. What we also want to know is whether there was an earlier community. We'll get some help from these geophysics results from a survey done a few years ago. They're not terribly clear, but it appears we've got some sort of ditch. That's the yellow line and various shapes inside it. It's possible the circles are Iron Age and the rectangular shapes may be Roman. And if so, does that mean the Romans took over or did the Iron Age people become Romanized? What we actually want to pinpoint in the first instance is this large ditch. Yeah. We want to know whether it's actually part of a big enclosure right, that, that right. comes around like this yeah. or whether it's just a, a sort of linear field system. So our first task is to relocate that uh, and some of the pits so we can look at those. OK, well, it'd be nice to put a section across that, wouldn't it? Oh, yes, it would, yes. So yes, how long yes, would you reckon yes. you'll be working that out? Oh, how long's a piece of string? <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, Stuart's gone walkabout, looking for earthworks and field boundaries to see if there's a pattern that our ditch will fit into. The reason we want to find the ditch is that it could mark the perimeter of the settlement and therefore the edge of the area we need to protect from the army. And since our preparations for digging are clearly going to take some time, we've let Phil loose to do some Iron Age carpentry. Well, what do we do? If, well, if Phil, if you grab a couple of bundles there, right. I'll just show, show everyone what you're going to be doing. Down at the far end of the site, he's going to help Guy Apter and a team of army volunteers with one of the most ambitious projects Time Team's undertaken, building an Iron Age roundhouse in three days. This space here will be the doorway. So, obviously, we don't really want to wattle across the doorway. Having driven in a circle of stakes, they've now got to wattle hazelwood between them to make a the wall. The thing to mention is we don't want um, joins going all the way up in one place. Because if you have the joins in one place, obviously that'll be a weak spot. This will tie the whole thing together and give it the strength that we want. And it's got a one. Yeah. You just give that a bit more stability. Can't see it taking three days myself. 
Well, it's lunchtime already, and we haven't opened a single trench. It's been such a slow business trying to confirm the whereabouts of any of the ditches and shapes identified on the old Geophys sketch. We're now getting closer, but frankly, we've lost a lot of valuable time. Have you managed to track this feature down yet? Because I'm anxious to get cracking with it. Oh, yeah, we've got no problem on, on the boundary or whatever it is. The big right. ditch is through here. See it? Yeah. Well, the logic is to dig something across the ditch, isn't it? Mm. So oh, we've yes, got yes, to, yeah. some date yeah. for that. And uh, just, you know, looking at it, it, it looks as if we've got round things and rectangular things. Well, that's so, an interesting issue, isn't it? Because it's quite possible that these round features belong to the Iron Age. And right. we've got a subsequent the Roman phase first. of activity yeah, dated yeah. to the Roman period producing these rectilinear features. OK, so having fixed that, right. we need you to carry on then. Yep, sure. So we're going to move on the... Feather out the field over there. Yeah, yes. See yeah. if you can target some of that. Not so fast. Before the digger can start, the army have to make a sweep of the area to check for any unexploded ordnance. If there is anything, it'll be Staff Sergeant John Hussey's job to make it safe. But we're in luck. We can get digging without fear of being blown up. Try and keep the bottom flat if you can. I know it's difficult with the ploughing, but uh, just so I can see it clearer. Oh, you've nearly finished. You told me it would take you three days. It's the middle of day one. You are kidding. This is the easy bit. We, um... Putting a few posts in the ground and mottling some sticks around doesn't take any time at all. There's a lot more to do yet. What exactly so. is it? Well, this is an Iron Age, well, as far as we can surmise from the evidence, this is an Iron Age roundhouse. You nearly said hat and then veered away no, from No, no, I did not say hat. <laughs> <laughs> or didn't even come close. Um, but from the evidence, we know their size. Um, we tend to know the direction of the doorway. Um, from classical descriptions, we know that they were thatched, and if you thatch a roof, it has to be at a certain angle, about 45 degrees, in order for the rain to run off the thatch and not through the thatch. That's, is that for the thatch over there? Absolutely. We have, um, well, about 250 bundles of uh, water reed. Why does it need using. all that? Actually, it probably needs a bit more, but uh, <laughs> um, it's a case of getting it thick enough so that you stop the rain, but thin enough so that when you have a fire in the centre and the smoke goes up, the smoke's able to escape. The from thing the that strikes me about the roof is how much is it going to weigh? I would say with the amount of reed we've got, about two or three tonnes. So what's the next job after this? Well, we put this on, and um, once that's on, we're actually ready to do the roof or daub the walls. We haven't decided which way around to do it yet. That's yeah. going to be a muddy job, and that is a very muddy job. Yes. <laughs> so who's going to Which do that? Which we save for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to slope off now. <laughs> right. I'll catch you later. <laughs> no one's moving quite as fast today as Victor. He's already started work on a drawing of our Iron Age enclosure. It'll be fascinating to see if the reality turns out as Victor's imagined it, with a boundary trench enclosing farm buildings and a Roman villa. Now that we've eventually got going, we're making good progress in Trench 1, our boundary trench, and it's starting to produce fines. It's like a bit of goat horn, I think. Very bulky for a goat, isn't it? Could be, yeah. It's a bit, yeah. It's a, it's a dog dish. It's black burnish ware from Dorset. A dog bar. Or a lid. No, in fact, no, that's a lid. See that groove? That'll yep. sit on the top of your pot and goes up and flat top. And so that's the top of one. It's a lid for a black burnish web. All right. Ideally, we'd have started Trench 2 by now to try and find out if the round shapes are Iron Age and the rectilinear Roman. What we want to do is cut a trench here from a circle into a rectangle so that we can see what the relationship is between the two. But the old geophys map isn't a scale drawing. So matching these results to what's actually on the ground is going to take more time than we've really got. So, John, do we know where this intersection point between the circular thing and the rectilinear one is now? Well, it should be somewhere on this line. That's the line Bernard right. set out based on the lab survey. But unfortunately, we've lost the key point from here. Oh. So we, we're not exactly sure where we are. 
So you can't tell me where to put a trench to get that intersection? Not at the moment. We just need a bit more time to expand the survey so we can understand how it relates. Right, so the bad news is we can't get started, but the good news is it's going to be worth waiting for. Give us 30 minutes and we'll see what we've got for you. Oh, well, I'll go and get a cup of tea then. I don't okay, see I'll anything else I can Chris has got the results. Carenza! Yeah? <laughs> not going to believe this. Yeah, have you just picked that up? <laughs> You're not. No, just as I walked away. <laughs> Good grief, that's beautiful, isn't it? Well, that must be Roman, isn't it? It's a little bracelet, isn't it? It looks like, like a child's bracelet. It's tiny. A twisted wire, is yeah. it? Yeah, and look, the clasp, well, presumably that's the end of it there with the possibly where it joined that. It's beautifully made, isn't it? Let's hope it is only half an hour because it's four o'clock already, the weather's changing and there's not much of the day left. Thankfully, Trench 1 is coming on very rapidly. Not surprisingly, the finds near the top have been late Roman. Particularly interesting is a hypercourse tile, a tile that would have been part of an underfloor heating system in a Roman house. Meanwhile, Mark Corney has been getting to grips with the pots. Oh, masses coming out the top of these ditches, Tony. It's mainly late Roman, but there's a couple of quite nice pieces. This is a base of a, a fourth century AD beaker, probably made in the Oxford region. Mm. Rather nice. But I'm particularly excited and interested by this, which is part of a jar with this rilled or sort of corrugated surface and a very distinctive rim. It's from a type of pot that's going to date from the, the end of the 4th or the early 5th century AD. Now, why do you find that particularly exciting? Because there is a lot of other evidence from the Salisbury Plain area that Roman-type activity carried on well into the 5th century. So this is the kind of stuff we'd like to see a bit more of. Roy, how's our big ditch coming along? Hello, Tony. Well, the big ditch now has resolved itself into four ditches. Four? Yes, we've got two here, two small ditches here. These two? This is one there, the one I'm, I'm kneeling in, and a smaller ditch here. And which what are is, they? They're probably um, part of a, a field system um, associated with the settlement. So they're not kind of residential, as it were? They, these are not directly residential. But what about further this, up here? Well, no, this, we, we're coming on to the ditches which are associated with the enclosure. But if we haven't got that enormous ditch that we thought we had, does that mean that we haven't got the big Iron Age settlement? Oh, not at all, no. What, what we're looking at is a boundary feature belonging with the settlement, which at some stage has been remodelled so that we've now got two ditches instead of the one. So Trench 1 is complicated. What we do know is that we've got Iron Age field boundaries, which separated fields as hedges do today, and enclosure ditches, which should indicate that there was an Iron Age settlement in the vicinity. And we've got our Roman hypercourse tile. Could we be onto some kind of Roman building tomorrow? We'll see. Of course, we had hoped to open a second trench to look at those circular and rectangular shapes. But Geophys have spent the entire day testing the site, and they've yet to say if they found anything definite. Two or three ditches yeah. they're finding and... John, <laughs> you've been marching up and down Salisbury Plain all day, haven't you? What have you found? Well, look at the results now, Tony. We actually think this might be a banjo enclosure. <laughs> a what? It's well, a, a banjo enclosure. They're called banjo enclosures because they look like banjos, but they're incredibly important. They're thought to be really high status Iron Age enclosures. They're probably even more important than the hill forts. They're very uncommon generally. There's quite a few in this area, but it's fantastic. It's unbelievable. It's classic. It's got the circular bit there, the entranceway coming up there, and these curving sort of ditches coming around the outside. It's absolutely classic. Excellent. Well, we may not have found our Iron Age enclosure, but it looks as though we might have a banjo. Beginning of day two, and it's crisis time in terms of manpower. It took us ages before we could start digging yesterday, and once we did, we found the ground was really hard and difficult to dig. But we found what we think is a banjo-shaped Iron Age enclosure over there, and we're still looking for our Iron Age settlement over here. But first thing this morning, we found evidence of what we think might be a third building. What exactly is it? It's a limestone roof tile off a Roman building. Complete nail hole there. 
So what kind of Roman building might this be? Large, rectangular, high status. I mean, this has been brought, what, 40 or 50 miles to be put on this building. And we've already found a hypercourse tile yes. here, haven't we? So is that additional evidence? It is indeed, and there is a high status, large Roman building somewhere between us and the woods here. Well, presumably, though, it could have come from anywhere around here, couldn't this, it? This hasn't moved very far. I mean, this is complete, the hypercourse tile, the large pieces of pottery. The building is within yards of us here. Can we not just mark the fact that there's a Roman villa around here somewhere and no, leave it we, at that? Um, I need to know exactly where it is. When the military say, where can we dig, I need to know where it is. I don't want a building this important to be accidentally damaged in the middle of the night. So it looks like we've got three important buildings now and yes. two days left. Yeah, get I think going. better go and have a word with Mick. <laughs> After a sluggish day yesterday, it's good that things are really speeding up and already this morning, we've identified the exact position of the Iron Age banjo geophysics located yesterday evening. We're going to go in that area there. That's a what? 10 by 10? Oh, that sounds a good enough area. Whereabouts? In the corner there, we'll take in the, the ditch, the banjo and some of the pits inside. That sounds ideal. Where, that's, so that's here? That, that's where we we're started to dig. So where's the boundary? Coming the, the other end, is it? Get. I mean, the whole thing curves behind us. Right, and right. we're going to do another arm over there. Yeah. Across so there. That, that's over so that's here. That's the other somewhere. arm. Yeah. And and it'd it be great to have a look at the inside of one of these, yeah. it? I want to yeah. see if there's some pits in yeah. there. Yeah. I go. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that do your art good? Yeah, I tell is... you what, there is nothing to beat a nice bit of chalk. No. That is like... the most... Gorgeous, gorgeous natural raw material. <laughs> Just peel the top off. You, 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 you don't understand, it's mate. You don't, you, don't you don't understand. You no, don't understand. I've no. been, I've been living on this wonderful white <laughs> stuff all my life, and it's gorgeous. Just to see it. Opinions vary about banjos. The old theory was that they were stock enclosures for keeping animals, but recently it's been thought that they were definitely residential, belonging to someone of high status within the community. Finding the banjo is great and a first for Time Team, but the worrying thought is that the army could be endangering our Roman building at this very moment. We may be onto a major discovery, but we've not had a glimpse of it so far. Once again, we're dependent on Geophys getting a move on. Try and shred the straw into it. I don't suppose they had steel cap boots in the Iron Age, but in other respects, this is authentic. Guy and his team are making a mud and straw daub to plaster the walls of our roundhouse experiment. Oh, it's all fallen off. <laughs> push it, push it in. Push it. I'm pushing it in. You push it in. You where are, you, where are your hands off? You push it in, sort of slide your hands off. Oh, OK. okay. When, you, when you use the term late Iron Age, yeah. what are you actually thinking of? Really talking about the period from the end of the second century BC, beginning of the first century. I mean, yeah. There are a number of major changes. In this area, many of the hill forts seem to go out of use. There's a change in the settlement pattern. Yeah. People are starting to use coinage, Iron oh, Age right. coins yes. are coming into this area. Yeah. And there's increasing contact with the Roman world. But the real change comes in the middle of the first century, 55 and 54 BC. Right. You know, Caesar has conquered Gaul. Yeah. He pays those two brief visits yeah, to Britain. Yeah. After that, probably because of some kind of treaty, we see a great flood of contacts. So there's about nearly 100 years, isn't there, between that Caesar's visit in 54, 55, and then the final conquest That's by right, Claudius. Claudius in 43. That's right. And I mean, this area is interesting as well because there's very little evidence of the Roman army stopping off in this area. It right. looks as if this is an area that's pretty well used to sort of Roman ways. There's probably fairly rapid assimilation into a Roman way of life. So, so we shouldn't think of, of large numbers of either Romans or Italians coming into this area? No, it's settle. the local population who have already got some Roman tastes, they become increasingly Romanised and eventually build their Roman style house. Geophys are still busy hunting for what may well be that Roman style house, but they're not getting very far. At the moment, all we know is that it must be somewhere in the northeastern part of the site. Some years ago, Roy Entwistle found a Roman corn dryer in the wood, and since the tiles we found were in Trench 1, we think the Roman structure might be on the higher ground in this corner.
But the big question remains, where on earth is it? Yeah, we've already uh, run it off into there. We yeah. should be able to run sections through there and see if we can actually pick up the sequence. Of Meanwhile, Phil has, has been busy extending Trench 2, our banjo enclosure. It's already yielded some great finds, and that means we can date it. See, look at that. This oh. looks like the most interesting stuff, Good because course. what we've got here is a really nice bead-rimmed jar. Good Lord. And this is classic, very late Iron Age. I mean, uh, you're probably well, looking uh, at the last uh, century before the Roman conquest, about I'm 50 I'm pleased to hear you because I would have guessed that, but it yeah. would have been a guess. Good guess, not bad for a medievalist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is the sort of stuff that was kicking around at, at the time of the Roman conquest. Exactly, and that. about a century before then, about right. 50 BC down to about AD 50. Ah, but it's, it, but ideal, it's, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's not really kicking about, as you put it. I mean, it's going straight in, into the hole. And, That's and right, these, I mean, this is the big shirt and it joins yeah. up with that shirt as well. So oh, we're getting quite that. a substantial piece here. Oh, it's always very satisfying. Yeah, that. get that yeah. match. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was good fresh stuff deposited in here, yeah. so it can be interesting to see what comes up from deeper down. We've got an excellent little trench here. Yeah, We've this got is some ready to get our teeth into. Very promising. OK, well, bash on's a thing, yeah. isn't it? Yep. It's the same story over in Trench 3, our second banjo trench. Do you think all this is late Iron Age? Yeah. It looks like it to me. Some of it might be a little earlier, but it yeah, looks pretty kosher cool. as late Iron Age to me. We need to get these cleaned up, really, and then see if we can piece more of them back together. Yeah. There's such a lot of pot in there, isn't there? Yeah. We need to push it over, <laughs> holding on to it, pushing this down, and also tightening this string up at the same time. Down at our roundhouse, Nick the Thatcher has arrived, and not a minute too soon. None of our army volunteers has ever thatched before, and they've got a ton of it to put on the roof by tomorrow evening. And make sure the reeds are pointing up to the top of the roof. And the next lot goes over the top so that it stops, the rain comes down over the top it. of it. Yeah. 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 How also, you know how much it's got to hang over? Well, if you do it so you can see the bottoms of the raft, the rafters, that will give you a good guide for now. Yeah. When we put a layer on top, yeah. we will finish it off. Right, okay. So what we can see is that that's getting a little bit high. Yeah. Right. So if we pull that down right. a little yep. bit, OK? okay. Yep. And if we can pack this up... And We're all a bit frustrated about the Roman building, so we've cornered John to tell us exactly where GFIs have got to. That's it, Bernard's finally sorted out the, the grid oh, problems, well, I think. And it's actually really quite exciting. Here, here's our banjo. Yeah. And as we move through the data, look, there's oh, a clear on suggestion of another one there. Yeah. But look, even further towards the edge of the survey, look at this. Oh. That rectangular sort of shape yeah. looks like a building. Yeah. I know this is a bizarre yeah. question, but do you ever get two banjos close together? You do, and we're in exactly the right part of the world for this phenomenon. They're not common, but when you see them like this, it's usually a very good sign of both a late Iron Age complex of probably fairly high status, and then you always get a big Roman building complex in very close proximity. It's as if you're seeing continuity from Iron Age land ownership into the Roman period. So could this be the Roman building that we're chasing, that we've got the roof tile of I and the height of the yeah. yeah, I mean, it's certainly substantial enough, I think, to have supported those stone slate I roofs. mean, obviously, we ought to put a trench in this, haven't we, to check this out? <laughs> you you were going to say that. Well, Ian's going to want that, isn't yeah. he? Oh, yes, yeah. we, we, we need to. Let, me, let me press you. If now you had to say where you thought it was most likely that it would be, where would it be? Well, look, there's two possibilities. One where John and Chris are at the moment. Just sort of over... over that that sort of area. But alternatively, yeah. Tony, on this sort of plateau here. And oh, this is very much flatter, isn't it? You, you could choose either. But I think it'd be better to wait. Why don't we stick a trench in one of these options now, and then once we've got the geophys, put something in the other one? I'd be more confident of getting a wall if you give me another half hour. Half hour? Yeah, that sounds fine. Half an hour, Chris, that's your maximum. Great. We're definitely getting closer to our Roman building, which has to be somewhere in this area. And having found one banjo, we now have two. This must mean we're onto a settlement of some considerable importance. But we won't dig the second banjo, because finding the Roman structure has to be our top priority now. In the meantime, in Trench 3, Carenza has been turning up some cracking finds. We've now come up with Iron Age pottery, 
really nice bits like that. So it does look like this ditch is part of the banjo enclosure that the geophysics showed, same sort of pottery that Phil's getting, so that's great. But even better, yeah. we've got this bone comb. Absolutely beautiful, oh, Iron Age beautiful. bone comb. That is so nice. Oh, coming through. Come on, Excellent. Well done, Martin. There you go. Come on, dig in. Oh, that's a bit wetter. I'm now lending a hand with the daubing. This is where the really hard graft comes in. The daub needs to fill the wall inside and out, and it all takes time. But if the wattling isn't thickly covered, it won't keep the wind and rain out, and it could easily fall down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Allow me. <laughs> and how long will it take to dry? Well, with this wind, certainly the outside will dry very quickly. The inside, maybe a, maybe a week, maybe a bit more. Depends on the weather. Um, I mean, it will stay dry once we get the roof on. It certainly stops the wind coming in, doesn't it's it? It's incredible insulation. It's amazing. I mean, Up here, it's really cold, yeah. really drafty. Down here, it's... Fine. And, of course, that's really important. I mean, we're on Salisbury Plains here. The wind is howling, and um, this would have been so important to be able to stay warm. We need some more dog. Just come in, boss. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. It's just trying to get... So which, one, which one's that? Oh, this is this iron age. That's the late iron age stuff right. we were looking at this morning. Oh, yeah. Which we've got a nice reconstructed shape for now. Cool. I'm often asked how you can get from one piece like that to a drawing like that. Yeah. And clearly you can see the diameter of the pot, yeah. so you've got some idea of that. And you can see the, the sort of beginnings of the profile. Yeah. But presumably the rest of it's experience, is it? It's partly experience, but also the, the shapes of these vessels, the forms are fairly standardised at the period we're talking about it. So I, th I think the reconstruction we could be 99% happy right, with. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What about the, um, the one with the rilling on, the ah, late Roman one? Ah, this late Roman one. Well, now it's been washed. It's what we thought it did. Yeah. They're still making pots like this in the opening decades of the 5th century. So it's right. about as late as you're likely to find for sort of proper Romano-British pottery. So can we see that one on the screen, Ray Sam? No, I haven't actually done it yet. Oh, right. <laughs> well, let's... <laughs> Let's make a start on it now, then. Yeah, I've got to sketch the sort of rough profile. So you have this sort of rim, deep undercut. They then have quite bulbous bodies, which then come back in, down to the base. And then you've got these bands of horizontal rilling, or like corrugations. John's time's up. And the geophys yeah. results have turned out it brilliantly. It looks like a Roman villa. Where about do you think? Well, if we put a trench right across, hopefully we'd find walls and a floor. Yeah, that looks good. Can, can you show us where it is on the ground? And we can we should be able to get that started tonight, shouldn't we, Mick? I think so. Yes. Well, I'll go and spray, spray the trench if you like, and I'll go and get the machine. Well, we finished the tea, shall we? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> So we're ready for the legget now. Phil's taking advantage of a short break while they get the Roman trench started to take a thatching lesson. So that it catches the ends of the reeds and you just hit the reed like this. You do the underneath first right. to get the line and then you hit it up. And what's happening here is the reed will rot wherever it's exposed. So the less that, it, that is exposed, the better. And by legging it up, you're left with just short bits. So you're really sort of chamfering it off then, Chamfer really? Chamfer all the way up, and that will go all the way up the roof. It's a really clever so, technique. Would you like to have a go with that? Yeah, I would. I'd love tool. to. I mean, I've seen you people have to, use um, it. I've seen... If you take this arm and rest it on the reed that you're hitting, yeah. it stops it buckling up. I've seen people do this on, on thatch roofs. I didn't really understand why, but it all makes perfect sense now. <laughs> I could get You're now a professional I could, get attached, I could get attached to this. <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to try and do is just take the rubbish off the top. Yeah, we'll have a look at it so. by hand, and we'll yeah. bring the machine back in a bit later on. Yeah, I think that's wise. Just have a, have a good look at this rubble. Yeah, but I mean, you, you're getting all this rubble at such a high level, it's suggesting you can play the walls that have just gone in. It's it? collapsed though, that's true. So yeah. We're just trying to do it as gently as we can. I think so. 
So the good news is that it looks like we're on to our Roman building. We're putting a large trench in just here, next to the wood. Geoffy's results suggest this will give us our walls tomorrow, and that's our chance to discover what it looked like, and possibly even who lived there. Beginning of day three, and the big question is, have we got enough information to save Beach's barn? In order to get it scheduled, we have to answer three questions. How big is the site? What condition is it in? And what kind of people used to live here? Well, quite frankly, we haven't answered any of these satisfactorily yet, and we've only got nine hours left. Carenza, I think yeah. I found another roof tile. Really? Yeah. Big one. Most of our energies today are going to be devoted to the fascinating Roman building we located last night. We don't know exactly what it is yet, but the roof tiles and pottery alone indicate that it must be of high status, as we'd thought. And talking of high status, that's precisely what our banjo enclosure is turning out to be. Well, hello, Tony. Letting the army do all the work. Well, we're paying them, aren't we? <laughs> Look, and not only that, we're incredibly excited. Why is that? Because overnight it's rained. And that's exciting. It yeah. is for us. It really is, because it's increased the contrast between the actual pit fills and the natural chalk. And look what we can see this morning. One there, one there and one there, those three patches of soil. Are they post holes? Almost certainly post holes. And post holes mean internal fittings within the banjo, which could include buildings. Yeah. So what do they tell you, Mark? Well, this is what I was hoping to see, because you can compare this with other examples we've got in Wessex, you can see on air photographs yeah. and geophysics, where you can see you've got pits, post holes. These are very densely packed uh, little enclosures which is a complete variance with the old idea that these things were stock enclosures and you drove your livestock down the funnel. Well, if you did that here, you'd have a lot of livestock with broken legs lying down the bottom of pits. I mean, these are clearly residential. Why would they be living in something which had got this extraordinary long corridor down it? I think these are best viewed now as like formal entrances or approachways, almost sound like ceremonial, your process along. Oh, come on. <laughs> Whenever you don't know what something is, you always say you archaeologists that it's ceremonial. No, no, ritual, no, no, we say it's ritual. ritual. Yeah. <laughs> ceremonial, we're on slightly yeah, yeah. firmer ground. You know, these are grand approaches to uh, what's going on inside it's these It's a bit enclosures. like the mall going up to Buckingham Palace. That's you know, it, a, sort of a formal, formal approach, drive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what kind of things do you think we might find here? Well, I think we need to look at all these structures inside yeah. this enclosure because we've got the, the boundary ditch round here. We might have a storage pit here. We've got post holes. We might have the outline of the, the actual house at the back. Yeah. We need to just disentangle that. It, it will take a lot of very, very careful digging. But I mean, I'm sure we got, well, we've got a day. We'll see what we can do. Would you have liked to live in one of these? Uh, not really. <laughs> no? Why not? It's a bit dirty. A bit small, dirty? Yeah. Well, do you think it would have been dirty when it's all... It's dirty now because it's wet, but when it's all dry, think it being nice and cosy? Yeah, it keeps the wind out. What about you? You fancy living in one of these? No, not really. No, you wouldn't get your PlayStation in, would you? No. Uh, We've been joined today by Peter Reynolds, who's a leading expert on roundhouses and Iron Age agriculture. This is a 14-foot roundhouse, but in the Iron Age they had a huge range of sizes, didn't they? Well, they did, ranging from this size, 14 feet, right the way through to maybe 60 feet in diameter. Yeah. And we've used a lot of materials in this little one. Oh, yeah, there's a ton of thatch on the top of that, yeah. and a ton of timber. Just imagine how that's going to grow when you're looking at a huge house. So what are the implications then for getting these materials together? You know, the, the, you know, there's a lot of straw, there's a lot of timber, a lot of mud. Well, you're looking at a huge acreage for the straw itself. Yeah. You know, you take a 50-foot diameter house, 16 tonne of straw, 16 acres, yeah. point one. Timber, you've got 220 trees, all plantation grown. Mm -hmm. You're now beginning to look from a, a circle of post holes, if you like, in the ground to a whole implication for landscape. Yeah. And I think what we're looking at in the Iron Age is a third arable, third pastoral, and a third managed woodland. You know, we're not going to be able to keep this house here, but how long did the original ones last? Well, I, I reckon the smaller ones, which are based on a single ring of posts, yeah. are going to last between 14 and 20 years, yeah. let's say. 
Yeah. But the big ones, the ones with the double ring, with the great post holes in, in the inner ring, they're going to last 200, 300, 400 years. Has it gone very loose when you look at Renza? Yeah, there was a sort of area that was very loose here. There's a kind of mortuary floor or layer or something coming from the south. Have you got it over there? Yeah, it looks like something does come through. I think we must be on top of the building now. It looks there. as though we're coming down onto the walls there. of our Roman building. Yeah, and since the early evidence is that some of them may have collapsed, we'll have to go carefully if we're to find intact structures. And just a moment ago, over at Banjo Trench 2, this was found. It's a quern stone, used for grinding wheat in the Iron Age. It seems to be so appropriate. That it's in a yeah, grain storage say, pit. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, <laughs> it, it seems mad, Peter, that they should dig a hole and fill it full of grain and it didn't rot. Oh, well, it's not mad at all, because, yeah. in fact, they're very advanced scientifically. Yeah. You know, we know why it works. They presumably did it through, through experience and practice. Yeah. But if you fill a hole like this with grain, yeah. you know, and this is going to take somewhere in the region of 10 tonnes when you think putting it all back together yeah. again. Yeah. That's a hell of a lot of grain. What happens? You fill it up, seal it with a clay seal, a hermetic seal. Right. Yeah. Which you've got to keep damp. Yeah. Now, that means underneath the clay seal, the, the cereals are just in a perfect growing condition. Yeah. So they grow, but only that much depth. So you've got produce... a thin skimming of growing grain That's on the it. top. Yeah. Gives off carbon dioxide, uses up carbs, uh, uses up the oxygen ah, in the pit. Yeah. Right, carbon dioxide preserves everything inside. Yeah. It's a perfect storage for big tonnage. So it goes dormant as soon as it fills up with carbon dioxide. Exactly effect. right. Yeah. And um, then and then you could actually, if you want to use it for a cereal or for actual seed. Perfect. You'd be germinated again. It's got over 98% germination after six months under the ground in a pit like yeah. this. And not for the first time on this dig, the weather's turned nasty. Oh, come on, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it works. God, it's God. Done, eh? It's tipping <laughs> down with rain outside. <laughs> But this works! Yeah, Absolutely. Incredibly Did impressive. you have any doubt? A I bit. I never had any doubt in you. Oh, oh you, you always say that. <laughs> <of> these things. <laughs> it's not what you say in the hotel. <laughs> there, there is still water coming through here, isn't there? Well, that's yeah, um, the <laughs> <because> <laughs> <have> finished. <laughs> yeah. but, but as soon as we finish, that will be it. No rain will come in here. And you can see it's quite thinly put on. Yeah. And yet, you know, it's perfectly waterproof. <laughs> what I would like to see, though, right at the end, if we'd know early, is, mm. is a fire in the middle. We're certainly going to give it a go, as long as yeah. we finish, because if you have a hole up there, yeah. you're creating a draft, oh, yeah. and it will take the fire straight You've up. You've got to seal that fire. gap yeah. before you dare light a fire, as it'll burn so the whole lot down. As long it? as we can finish it, yeah. we'll have a fire. Yeah. But one thing we know already, it doesn't have to stop this bitter wind from yeah. freezing yeah. us, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's should, we, should we do the next lot of stuff in here, then? After the rain, Phil's moved to Trench 4, where he's desperately needed, and where Carenza seems to be uncovering a floor. Phil, this is looking hellish complicated. Well, it is, but I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I don't actually know what's going on here myself, but look at this, look, oh. it's a plaster of the surface of a wall. Phil thinks he's found an outer wall. Plaster on a wall in the middle of the countryside is amazing and not what you'd expect. This is clearly an important right. building, but we really need dating evidence if we're going to understand what it was. Hey, really decomposed. So that's. Come on, oh, look at on. this. Yeah. Oh. This is our first coin. Oh, our what? first coin? That's, weird. that's a ridiculously few that we found, but that. It's Ooh, just come out of the trench now. There we are, Mark. You're the man for this. Right. Yes, well... I think, right. I think whatever you tell me, I'm not going to believe you. No, right? no, we're just going to need a bit of cleaning. A, but well, I mean, exactly, the, yeah. The size alone is enough to say it's, it's fourth century. It's, so it's, it's, it's late. the same general date as the pottery yeah, we've been getting. Yeah. Meanwhile, over at our banjo, Rob spent hours gently cleaning the ground around the quernstone, and he's finally in a position to lift it. This wonderfully preserved stone was grinding wheat 2,000 years ago. That's a nice little jumble there, isn't it? <laughs> We've got a nice stone wall here and a nice bit of plaster coming down onto a piece of pottery. So does that mean that we can date the wall if we know how old the pottery was? That's right, that's why I've got Mark over. Yeah, look, I've got a paintbrush. I can be a oh, real archaeologist. <laughs> It's an inverted room. It, it looks like it's sort of later Roman, third or fourth century type, just from seeing it in there. 
Mark, I've just found this coin out the wall core. <laughs> it's all coming up, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Have you got any idea how old that coin might be? That's actually a figure of a victory. Uh, that's her head, legs, arm out holding a wreath. And this type of coin was minted between 388 and 402 AD. It's the very last issue of bronze coins coming into Roman Britain. So it would probably have been dropped sometime early in the 5th century AD. So it really is looking as though this is a very late Roman site. Yes, certainly all the material we've got here is, is looking very late and the coin just confirms it. Two miles away at our incident room, it's time to bring together all the bits of information we've got about the site and the landscape. What did happen to that boundary ditch? If you look at the site itself, you see this ditch coming through here? That's the ditch we were excavating in Trench 1. It continues in earthwork form along here. Up here you've got one banjo and another banjo and that's where the, the Roman buildings are up there. Now if you look at these big major land boundaries that, that exist, and if we add our information that we've found... This map shows us the location of the Iron Age farm estates that were already known about. But with the evidence of our boundary ditch, we can see a new estate centred on Beach's barn. Big gap here. Yeah. It looks as if it's another estate that's there in the Iron Age period, continuing through into the Roman period. What does all this tell us about the people who actually lived here? I think what it tells us, the big picture, is that we're looking at a, a very stable population that's probably been in this area since at least the Bronze Age. They made the transition into the Iron Age, then after the Roman invasion they adopted Roman ways. But we're not looking at immigrants here coming in. We're looking at the indigenous population who become Romanized and they start to adopt Roman ways of building. But the land units, the estates on which they make their living, seem to remain largely unchanged. Beach's barn has proved an intriguing excavation for Time Team. What began as an investigation of a ditch surrounding some round things and some squarish things has produced astonishing evidence of a high status settlement here, stretching from the Iron Age days of the boundary ditch and the banjo right through the entire Romano British period and all in the middle of the countryside, miles from any town. And the huge collection of finds covers the whole history. Not only have we got this hundredweight or so of dead animal, but we've also got all of this. Fantastic, yeah. isn't it? Amazing. <laughs> what have yeah. we got, Mark? Well, I mean, the really exciting thing to me, Tony, is that we've, we've got this late Iron Age material that we wanted to get from the banjo now. But this isn't late Iron Age, is it? No, no, this comes from the site behind us, the, the Roman building. And we just put it here to show the range. And what about this? Now, that, that was marvellous to see, especially coming out one of those Iron Age pits, because these things are probably not just thrown away as rubbish. There seems to be a set pattern quite often that when a new pit is dug, another one is backfilled and you can find things like human burials or little deposits of animal bone. And in this case, they appear to have put a, a perfectly good and serviceable quern stone into the pit. This isn't quite what it seems, is it, Peter, this Well, one? well not quite. That, 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 in fact, is the bottom stone of a quern stone. There's a top one that goes on top of that. So it's a rotary quern, but even then it's not a rotary quern because if you look there, that side is more worn than that one. And so the handle went in a quarter movement. Rather so than taking it all the way around. Rather than going all the way around. So it's sort of backwards An and oscillatory forwards. business. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's beautiful. But I think what we've got is basically lots of phases of yeah. Roman building. Yeah. And now, as we come to the end of our dig, Carenza's got the job of explaining our Roman building to Ian Barnes. Yeah. We're pretty sure the building was a small villa and probably the centre of the farm estate which we identified in the incident room a few moments ago. Together with our banjos, will that be enough to have the site scheduled? It, well, it's, I couldn't have asked for any more. We, we, we know the extent of it. The geophysics has shown it to be in this area here. You've found uh, the date of it and the nature of it. We, could, we can show the results to English Heritage. We can get the monument scheduled and then it's a question of joining up a management plan. Um, Will that enable you to keep the army off it? It's not so much keeping them off it. I mean, they've been they've, they've run over this for the last 103 years, and you can see it's. I don't think it's affected it too much. It's a question of really st stopping them digging on it. And now we can see the full extent of our site as it might have been between about 400 BC and 400 AD. Dominating the estate in the late Iron Age would have been the banjo enclosures, with their huge roundhouses for the upper ranks of society. 
And then, with the Romanisation of this area, eventually came our Roman villa. With its courtyard and its plastered walls, it must have made an impressive sight overlooking this thriving agricultural landscape. Over the last three days, we've given Ian a fantastic amount of information, enough for him to get this area scheduled, which means we've achieved what we set out to do. We've helped save Beach's barn. Hey, you've actually finished it. Yes. Have you had a good time? Absolutely fantastic. The best three days of my life. <laughs> and you've even got a little fire there. That's yes. really nice, isn't it? Eh? What happens to you next week, Steve? Well, I'm off to Bosnia, Tony. Well, I hope oh. we've given you a few days to remember, mate. <laughs> and you doubted whether they'd do it. It was a huge undertaking, but um, I couldn't have done it without this team. They were superb. Kev, is it all finished now? Not quite, Tony. What have you got to do? Oh, oh the flag! Okay. <laughs> what does it say on the bottom there? With resolution and fidelity. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's something you made. <laughs> <laughs>